so in this video guys I will show you how you're actually possible of actually color grading any Nikon whether it's a D5200 right here or how I'm going to show you guys live is how I'm going to actually grade my Nikon Z50. I'm going to color grade it, I'm going to color correct it and show you guys yes, even on an entry mirrorless DSLR, even if it's a Nikon, you can still create cinematic and good looking color grades. And I'm going to show you guys that live in this video and if you stay all the way till the end, I'm going to show you guys on my computer exactly how I like to color grade my profile as well as how you guys can do it at home. So. Let's get into this video, man. So first thing you need is some footage. And I'm not gonna get too fancy and get someone or use some of my own client videos, but I'm just gonna go over there, film myself a talking head and show you guys the steps of how you get that footage first so you can have the best start when it comes to color grading your Nikon video. So let's go guys. So I just want to show you guys nothing too fancy when it comes to recording footage. You can just stand in front of your camera and get practice with you yourself recording and you can video grade or color grade, color correct yourself. So when it comes to having the best possibilities of how you color grade, you want to make sure that your camera is the best possible settings. And if you want to learn how I shot this in a flat picture profile, link in the description, check out that video first of the best Nikon video settings for your Z50, as well as check out my other video of how you get the best lighting. Because if you guys don't know yet, if you have the best settings and the best lightings, you get the best video quality. And it's so important to have the crispiest and rawest color and your video settings so then you can actually have it an easier ability to actually color grade when you're in premiere or whatever you want to use final cut so right now this is the raw uncolor graded uncolor corrected video footage in 4k recording in uh, 24 frames on a timeline in 4k footage and as you can see how much you can actually push in terms of the color grade if it's on a flat picture profile in comparison to if it's a neutral or it's standard the reason why a picture profile is so important because if you use your built-in cameras you know to your standard profile picture is that it'll be too contrasted already it'll be it's way too saturated so then when you're in post-production you can't bump that up anymore and it'll look a lot unnatural so you just want to play around with overall your color grading with your video footage and just seeing how your lighting is on point it's consistent as well as your camera settings are decent and now guys I'm gonna jump into my laptop and show you guys how I actually color grade this footage and you can play around and get super creative super artsy there's no right or wrong way when it comes to color grading but correcting there is a little bit of a rule book so as you guys can see right here this is the clip that I just recorded and it is completely raw. No color grading whatsoever yet. I'm just gonna put in my in and out points, drag that right into my timeline right here. And this is how it looks like before I color grade it whatsoever. So first thing I do is I open up the, Lumi the Lumetri scopes. And how you do that is go into the scopes and you right click and use the vector scopes as well as the waveform luma this is the waveform this is the scopes and this is just to look at my color tones as well as my overall exposure of the video so first thing i do is i look at my white balance whether or not it is properly the whites are whites the blacks are blacks and it's not too cool or not too warm and adobe premiere as you can see here automatically adjusts the white balance to have it a little bit more warmer with a little bit slight of a purple tint next i want to bump up my exposure just a little bit not too much because it'll look overblown but just enough and then you guys can see what i did so far and then contrast because i have it on a flat picture profile i like to bump up the contrast just a little bit just a little bit not too much highlights depending whether or not i'm outside i usually bump down my highlights just a little bit because I'm using a ring light here and a softbox. Shadows, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Whites. And then I like to go into my creative tab and up the vibrance just enough. And the saturation as well. The vibrance focuses mostly on skin tones. As you can see, the orange popped more when I pop up the 
vibrance where the saturation just pretty much does ups everything. Once I have my pretty much desired outlook of how it's color corrected, color grading is essentially applying all the, the cool dark shadows and teals and all that stuff. So you can see what I've done so far. And I don't really put with any shadow tint or highlights. I go into my curves and the most technical way of how you apply a color correction is what the film people like to call an S-curve. So you, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you bump up your highlights and you bring out your contrast, right? That is the typical S-curve. But for me, I just look at my scope, my uh, Lumetri right here. And I just like to bump up my highlights just a little bit. Reset that guy. And I like to bring down my shadows. So how this works is anything that crushes 100 or 0, it, you're crushing the shadows or the highlights. And that is my basic color correction. And how I color grade, I've been playing around with the hue versus hue. I pick a midtone, whether that's, you know, the wall. And I can start to play around with the colors, as you can see here. I'm changing. You don't want to go too intense, but just the subtle color correction. So I turn, I'm, I'm telling Adobe Premiere to make all yellows a little bit more red. See, I can turn into the Hulk. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to mess with that too much. You just want to have like a subtle, a very subtle grade, right? And then what I like to do if you really want to have a more intense in terms of color grading, you can do the color wheels and match. So what the color wheels and match does is you are applying all the midtones, all the shadows, and all the highlights to a specific color. This is where it gets a little bit more advanced. But first, I'm going to fix my skin tones here. I'm looking a little too red. So I'm going to go back into my color wheels. And the basic understanding of color wheels and color highlights is you want to always be on opposite spectrums. So if you, you, you want to have yellow shadows, you want to have blue or teal midtones. Those are the best color. If it, it's based on color theory. Everything you want is to be opposite, right? You don't want to have green and yellow as your shadows and midtones because it's going to look not that great. So you always want to have opposites when it comes to your color tones and your color grading. That's just a good rule of thumb to start off of. So first I'm gonna going to have, let's say, yellow shadows, right? And this slider on the right controls the luminance. So I can either bring down every single shadow or I can crease it. So now that I have a yellow shadow, I'm gonna have more of a bluer midtone. So I'm going to drag that here. And you can also bring this down or up in terms of midtones. And yes, this uses a lot of GPU. And for me, I like to have my yellow highlights to match my yellow shadows. And this was just, as you can see, before and after applying a little bit of a color grade. You can get more complicated here with the HSL secondary where you can make, let's say, my black t-shirt turn into like a different color. And all that fun stuff. But I might save that for another video, but this is just like a little sneak peek of what you can do with the HSL secondary. It's more so for a color correcting like a specific thing that's kind of off color or you can fix the tones in your face, but I'm not going to be touching that. And that is how I color grade my Nikon footage. And just so you guys can see a little bit of a before and after.
as you can see, before and after, before and after, right? The difference of shooting on a complete flat picture profile right here, you'll see that you can do quite a bit with this Nikon 4K footage, and it's all about having the right settings as well as having the right lighting so you can have the best quality because it's all about quality of, of the video. The higher the quality is when it comes to the video, the more that you can actually grade and color and have all that fun stuff. So now guys, you know exactly how you can actually possible. It's possible guys, it's freaking possible to color grade any video footage. You can color grade anything. You don't have to have a cinema camera. You don't need to have a expensive camera. As long as it's a video format, you can color grade it in a Premiere or whatever software that you can use. Although you might not get the best results because some footage isn't let you like film in S-Log or your N-Log or whatever logs that there are for specifically for color grading. But yes, to answer your question, you can color grade any video footage, even if it's an entry. Nikon, mirrorless, DSLR, whatever your heart desires. And that's how I color grade my footage when I started. And over time, I've learned to evolve my own styles of color grading. And yes, I know there's more complicated things like DaVinci Resolve. You can get really complicated with the colors and you can even buy your little keyboard with the little twisty knobs and all that stuff. But I'm gonna show you guys, that, that was just the basics of how you color grade. It's so much, it's an endless like ways of how you can artistically express yourself through your videos. And if you wanna get more serious about videos and cameras get my course if you can get more serious about making your first thousand dollars as a video creator or getting that first video job link in the description to sign up for my master class and if i helped you in any way make sure you grab all my resources in the description smash the thumb up button my name is peter you're watching a broke visionary collective where we all start with nothing but you guys can always create something cheers